Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, and thanks to the organizers. I think the first important issue to review together is the main goals of WMD uh, non-proliferation conventions. Very quickly, all WMD non-proliferation conventions and treaties have primarily three core goals. First, to prevent the spread of WMD and technologies related to weaponization. Second, to guarantee complete disarmament of such weapons by member states uh, signatories. And third is to ensure cooperation in the peaceful use of nuclear, biological, chemical uh, sectors among all member states. Knowing the main goal of uh, all WMD conventions, then before going to uh, nuclear weapon free zone, WMD free zone in the Middle East, I think it's important to uh, have a look to the global efforts for WMD. Since the largest arsenal of WMD are possessed by five permanent members of United Nations Security Council, such as states should demonstrate their serious determination to reduce their reliance on WMD and orchestrate a multilateral and collective security cooperation uh, in order to address the uh, security threats. As long as the world powers are going to stick with WMD as the instrument of deterrence, and they are not ready to move seriously forward to dismantle or to disarm. Uh, they, I, I mean, this is really difficult to expect other countries, uh, including uh, countries in the Middle East, would take it serious. And worse, I would say, unfortunately, the permanent members of the United Nations Security Council all have opted to moder modernize their nuclear arsenal, delivery systems, and relate infra related in infrastructure, which practically undermines the objective of the NPT and other non-proliferation and disarmament treaties. Third is about uh, the region. Uh, um, all, uh, we can discuss and negotiate uh, uh, one complete treaty for uh, WMD free zone in Middle East, or uh, the second option is to, while the goal is a comprehensive WMD free zone treaty in the Middle East, we uh, go step by step because I think uh, the easiest step and the first step could be regional countries to sign and ratify comprehensive test ban treaty, CTBT. Uh, it is more plausible and possible because regional countries other than Israel, they do not possess nuclear weapons. Uh, the second easier one would be to uh, go for biological weapon conventions because there are a very few countries in the Middle East which are not, they have not ratified w, I mean BWC, biological weapon conventions. Then the third step uh, I suggest to go for regional states to become part of chemical weapon conventions. Again here, because majority of the countries in the Middle East, they have signed and ratified this convention. And fourth is to uh, uh, strengthen uh, the, the resolutions, treaties, or to uh, uh, follow the resolutions, treaties like UN Security Council Resolution 1373, UN Resolution, uh, uh, UN uh, uh, United Nations Security Council Resolution 1540 in order to counter WMD trafficking and terrorism by having firm commitments from uh, all countries in the region. Uh, uh, to, to, to prevent uh, WMD trafficking. And finally, I think uh, we need to push Israel to accept NPT uh, because the other members of Middle East, they do not have any objection. And as long as Israel is not going to uh, accept NPT, we would never have 
or who would be able to have the WMD free zone in the Middle East. The fourth point I have is about the priorities, urgent priorities. Uh, before I go to the urgent priorities, I think uh, the very important issue in order to have progress on WMD free zone initiatives, first, we need the political will of the world powers. Always, I'm going to use Iran sample, Iran uh, uh, as an example. When the world powers decided uh, to, to reach to a conclusion about or a solution about Iranian nuclear crisis, we all know within 18 months, hundreds of hours of negotiation, even one time 18 days, the State Secretary of the United Nations stayed in a hotel in order to finish a 170 pages document because they had the political will. And the reason we have failed during last decades on WMD free zone, I'm, I'm personally sure because we do not have political will of the world powers. The second uh, issue is that we need them, the world powers to put aside double standards and discriminative policies. And the third is to depoliticize depoliticization uh, of non-proliferation efforts. Uh, again, I'm going to use uh, Iran as an example. Iran is a member of NPT. Iran does not have nuclear bomb. Iran has accepted JCPOA, which contains the most intrusive monitoring, verification, and transparency measures agreed by uh, by, by any undefeated country during the history of non-proliferation. Iran is the most inspected country during the history of IAEA. At the same time, Iran is under the most comprehensive sanctions. And compared with Israel, Israel is not a member of NPT, possess huge arsenal of nuclear bombs, remains the main obstacle on re, uh, realization of nuclear weapon free zone, WMD free zone in the Middle East. And at the same time, Israel enjoys the most comprehensive support from all uh, uh, superpowers, member of United Nations Security Council. If you compare these two behaviors, then you would understand the political will, you would understand double standards, you would understand discrimination, and you would understand how this issue is politicized and they are not really serious. The second uh, important issue as an urgent issue, I believe would be to revive the Iranian nuclear deal known as JCPOA between Iran and the world powers and to, to be implemented correctly, precisely, in a non-discriminatory uh, manner implemented by all signatories of the world powers. And uh, because the reason is that during last decades, this is the best achievements practically on non-proliferation. JCPOA is the most comprehensive document during the history of non-proliferation of nuclear uh, technology or nuclear weapons. And if uh, it is going to be uh, completely uh, killed, then I would say the only achievement of the international community is out. If it is out, then we are how we are going to have the next steps to be successful. And then I, I think we should think about the uh, initiatives to regionalize the principles of JCPOA because 200 nuclear scientists for years and years, they negotiated in order to create this document, which is the most comprehensive non-proliferation document. And that's why we should use this as an asset in order to uh, have a very transparent uh, region on the nuclear. That's why I'm, supposed, I'm, I'm, I'm proposing regionalization of the JCPOA. The fourth initiative would be to reinforce a regional non-proliferation, regional non-proliferation effort by placing them within a comprehensive cooperation and security system in the Persian Gulf involving Iran, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and the other GCC countries. This idea 
with this idea, we can have nuclear weapon free zone in the, in the Persian Gulf. We can have WMD free zone in the Persian Gulf as a sub regional. We can regionalize, regionalize the principles of uh, JCPOA. And that would be really a great achievement. And the fifth uh, initiative uh, could be uh, establishing a multilateral enrichment facility operated and owned by the members of the Persian Gulf security system, while the world powers also, they can be shareholder and they can be presented in order to have a regional multilateral uh, enrichment facilities. And finally, uh, we should not really ignore the importance and the impact of the religion uh, for advocating uh, WMD uh, free zone in the Middle East and globally. Ayatollah Khamenei has already issued a religious fatwa uh, banning all WMDs. I believe uh, the, the international community should work uh, to have the same fatwa by the religious leaders of uh, the other big religions like Christians, Judaism. And I would suggest the Secretary United Nations Security Council convene an international meeting inviting all re big religious leaders of the big religions in order to have a common statement to ban uh, uh, all WMDs religiously because many, many uh, people in the world, the population, uh, worldwide, they still uh, are religious and they believe in religion. Uh, Paul, I would stop in Thank order you. to uh, go for the next speaker.